Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be doing a photo critique for a Mehmet Koman. Uh, sorry if I've pronounced your name wrong, I'm not used to names like that. I'll call you Mr. Koman. Um, okay, what he's saying is that he has sent in a couple of photos for me to critique and he's given me the permission to use these in my YouTube videos. Thank you very much. He's been shooting for five years. He started off with a 400D and he's now using the Canon 5D Mark II, a lovely camera. He's an amateur and he does it only for a hobby, uh, but he would like to develop his style and maybe do photography as a semi-pro in the future. Okie dokie. So the first shot, what we'll do is I'll zoom in on this so we can see a little bit better. Okay, the first shot is saying that it was done with a model that he met up on Model Mayhem. Now Model Mayhem, if you don't know, is a website where models, photographers, hairstylists, uh, makeup people can all kind of log on, set up their own little page, put up their own photos and that stuff, and network all photography and modelling kind of stuff. Model Mayhem or Pure Storm are two good sites if you want to meet up with other models. Sometimes you get models going, oh, I only do it for money, and other photographers that go, I only do it for money, or you can find people that are interesting and creative enough that want to do stuff together for free, just because it's getting cool stuff. So anyway, uh, he hasn't given me the name of his model. I'd always credit the model if you're doing a shoot with, a, especially one that's as gorgeous as this as well. So this one he's saying he's shot with the Canon 5D Mark II, f10, 200th of a second, ISO 100. Off cam camera flash through a white shoot through umbrella to the model's right. Okay, here, um, okay, this is an odd shot here. Gorgeous model and well exposed, especially with the background. However, you're seeing this is shoot through an umbrella. I don't believe you. I think you're lying to me here because an umbrella gives you a much more enveloping light, it gives you a much soft, softer shadow, a softer shadow. Uh, here, as you can see from this strap here, that is just high contrast, that is shadow then light, shadow and light, there's no kind of smooth transition whatsoever. And also, the way that this light is coming up, you see we've got a little bit of shadow coming up from our nose, now that is never flattering. You always want the light to hit your model, especially a beautiful model, from slightly above. I've never have my flash below eye height if I'm taking any photos of a model. The reason for that is it, below can work absolutely fine, but that's for certain shots where you want it to have a little bit of a, a creepy look that the light is coming from below. But if you're having a gorgeous model in a nice location, a nice sunny day, have it so it's almost mimicking where the sun would be coming from. Or just having it so it's coming down the way, because that's where we see normal shadows on a human face. And that is much more complementary rather than having shadows going up the way. That's never good. So I would definitely, on this shot, I would have uh, made sure that your flash that you're using was above where the model eye height is. But also the background is a bit strange. She is right in the middle of this shot here. And yet we've got a bridge dissecting right the way through her and we've got this big pole coming at the back of her head. Um, I would definitely have moved her so she was more at the end of a bridge or near the start of the bridge or somewhere where she's not really kind of... It's almost like she's been superimposed on a blurry picture in the background. It's a bit strange on this one. Um, also, the flash you're using, you're, again, you're, just because you're saying it's through an um, shoot through umbrella, it kind of stops really quickly. Like, this is all in shadow here, unless this is some kind of burning that you've done or some vignetting that you've added. But it, it just doesn't look quite right. So here, I would say, always bring the flash up so it's higher than your model. Okay, your next shot here, uh, you've used the same model. Okay, same model. Uh, interesting, okay, this was down uh, South London at midday, Canon 5D Mark II, F9, 100th of a second, ISO 100. Okay, settings are absolutely fine. Off camera flash through a shoot through white and... Uh, no, I don't believe you. you. Again, you've got such harsh transition from shadow to light that I do not believe this is through an umbrella, unless the umbrella is miles away and its size of it is having no effect. Um, so yeah, that's a bit weird. Now, what I do think is gorgeous model, grungy location, works well. That contrast is complementary. Same with her bright red dress going with this rank kind of green grungy area. I think that goes absolutely fine. I think that is quite a fun, interesting kind of take on the shot. However, with her having no shoes on, that doesn't go with her dress. Now her dress is kind of a party dress, kind of a going out clubbing kind of dress. So with that, it looks odd that she doesn't have any shoes on. You know, if she's having no shoes, I'd want her to be in a more kind of a cosy, kind of like, I'm a hippie walking around the beach with no shoes kind of look, rather than I'm a party girl about to go out, here's some amazing model shots, but I have no shoes on. Here, it just looks like she's forgotten her shoes. And that's what I'm just really noticing just now, apart from all the lighting and all that kind of stuff. So think about the whole costume, the whole outfit that the model is going to be wearing, including the shoes. Maybe she didn't want to wear the shoes there, but maybe crop it up so you're just looking at the dress and her. 
Now your next shot, no, your next shot, it's the same model in the same location. Right, remember, this is a portfolio critique. Now, if you remember, if my portfolio submission guidelines, this is your portfolio, not just, I did a shoot one day, here's all my photos, Dom, tell me what they look like. I want to see your range of skills. So here you've done the same model for three shots so far, and in very close to the same location. So diversify the portfolio to really show off your skills. Now here you're saying camera settings, all absolutely fine, shoot, shoot through umbrella, don't believe you. The composition of this one is a little off, it's kind in the middle. I would have preferred her to be more left of this image. Yeah, you're right, she was right in the middle of this shot, which, does it help? I don't know if it really does. Um, yeah, the great thing with the Canon 5D Mark II was it 21 million pixels? You can crop this as many times, as many ways, and many angles as you want, and you're not going to have an image which isn't an amazing kind of level of resolution for a hot meal image. So, yeah, I would work on your composition here. Also, wait a minute. Ah, no, okay. Again, flashes come from kind of below, going up the way, as you can see by the shadows. But really, you chose that one of the model's face? Now, hair looks cool and stuff, but if I was a model, I'd be like, damn it, I really wouldn't have put that one in because you're looking A, straight up her nose, and B, she was in mid-flight kind of putting a little bit of an odd face on in the in mid-action. So if you're doing shots like this, get lots and give lots of critique and look at the photos on your camera and show them to the model so she knows how to relax her face while she's doing a jump in some certain types of way. Yeah, more shots of this where you got to work on making sure the model's face is relaxed at some point. Okay, your next shot, this is another model from Model Mayhem. I'm guessing it's a different one. Uh, this was shot in a church court somewhere in Pimlico, London. Uh, camera settings are all cool, yeah. Off-camera flash, do you know, what do you say here? Off-camera flash through a white, shoot through umbrella to the model's left. Now, now yes, yes, you have. You have done that because look at the shadow. Look at the kind of soft transitions that we get so the light hitting her and then the soft shadows it right behind her. So yes, I do believe you've used an umbrella on this one. Now with this shot, you're at a funny angle, you're at uh, a funny position and you're shooting down the model. The model's got a kind of a bit of an odd angles going on here as well. But you know what, I think that totally works because we've got her with her kind of spaceman kind of leggings on and her cool outfit. So it's, that's quite cool and contradictory or contrasty to the stony, kind of old-fashioned looking church area. Um, you've got lots of like sharp angles and geometric shapes of the floor patterning and the stone in the background, which works well contrasting or complementary to her soft, shiny, smooth, soft, roundy bits. Um, however, one thing I would say is that I would crop, again, I would just work in the composition of what you kind of finalize in because in the background, there's a little bit of light hitting something back here and I'm thinking, Ooh, is that going to be of any importance to the image? So I would just kind of make sure that there's nothing in the background that can distract from the model. Even if you just use a really strong vignette or if you do like a fade to black at the top and then you put your logo up there, that's what I would have done to kind of clear out that background there or just kind of crop it so you've just got something a bit like that. So there, I'm not distracted by anything in the background at all. Okay, so let's go to your last one. So this one is a non-model photo, I can tell that. It's of a famous dolphin and mermaid that I took a wee while ago. Um, okay, it was a difficult shot as the sun was very bright and I had to angle myself to get a good lens flare effect. Okay, so the lens flare is this stuff going on here. You've got this lovely orange lens flare and the sun is obviously just out of camera, just up there. Okay, so that works absolutely fine. What I would do is I would enhance the blue channel a little bit because the sky kind of it's gone from blue to looking a little bit grey. So I'd really enhance the blueness to really show off the lovely clear blue sky that you had. So whenever you're shooting towards the sun, you definitely get it faded to white up there, but I would really enhance the blues just so it's not totally dull. And with that, maybe enhance the oranges as well. So you really have this nice contrast of colors, which works quite well. However, on this shot, I'd have to say, compositionally wise, the background is distracting and confusing with the foreground subject of interest. The subject of interest where you've got is the model and the person and the dolphin and all that. We're just seeing the back of her head and the dolphin. So, okay, you can't change that. That's not going to be changed. But with her, we've got this kind of texture and, and detail there. But the background is equally sharp and it's got lots of texture and detail and everything going on there as well. So that is 
kind of not helping each other. You've got all this space over here of emptiness. So if you'd moved around to a little bit of an angle and had it so that the mermaid or whatever is, is over here and it looks like her butt was going to be landing on these kind of sharp points over there. That's where I think just moving your angle would have really kind of enhanced the shot so you really can see the separation of the the bridge in the background, which is Tower Bridge, if any of you don't know, in London, that is not London Bridge, that is Tower Bridge. Um, and if you have the model just to the side of that, you can have both elements in the shot and how they complement each other. But here, they're just distracting with each other. Whew. Okay, so yeah, definitely think about how the background uh, doesn't infringe on the interest in the foreground subject. Okay, so I hope that helps Mr. Cohan. Is it, is it Cohan? Hold on. Coman, Coman. Okay, I hope that helps. Uh, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Speak to you later. Cheers. Bye bye.